Hey there, fellow revolutionaries, Rodamont here. Thank you for tuning in to Bellright. Episode 2, Recruiting Villagers. Five days until winter. So, speaking about winter, uh, the important thing to note in winter is that a lot of the forgeables, anything that you kind of pick up from the ground, except for a few exceptions like river reeds, cannot be harvested in winter. So, berries, or flax, or sage, or garlic, or mushrooms, all that kind of stuff uh, cannot be obtained in winter, and you should stockpile some food ready for it. Also, in terms of um, spoilage, when you have a stack of food, only the top of the stack spoils. But if you have it in your inventory, it will all spoil at the same time. So if I take one mushroom out, you can see the next mushroom has a refresh spoil timer, which is a good way to keep food from going bad, because what it can do is I can have a giant stack of mushrooms and keep them in a box and only one mushroom will spoil at a time. Uh, the wake up bonus or the sleeping bonus is here. So in attributes, as you can see, I have a, a slightly higher stamina regen and max stamina from having slept. So we are gonna head back to Dobrin Yorkland to ask what we can do about trying to befriend him and his village. You can also uh, click on certain areas like rounding and waypoint it. And what that will do is it will show up on your mini map no matter where you are. So I just waypointed my shack. So as you can see, even though it's not within the range of my mini map, I can see where I live in relation to where I am. Which is useful for heading to distant quest uh, areas or always heading home. So now that the villagers are out, these are all villagers Have you seen the elder yet? that you could hypothetically recruit. I'm looking for good people to help survive this place. And if you talk to them, it will tell you what they require. So this guy requires renown, which I have enough of. And then it shows you their traits and stats. Um, little spoiler, beggars are basically never worth recruiting. So in their stats, you can see uh, what their maximums um, for each specific ability is. So, beggars are never going to be capable of very much. Uh, also, in each village, there are some specialty uh, tradespeople. Stop wandering around. So, for instance, Owen Tom, here busy. is a blacksmith, but I'm not going to be able to recruit him until much later on. And in Herendine, there are blacksmiths, weavers, and farmers. And every town has a few different specific professions. So here's a farmer, you can see with the uh, flop cap. And here's a weaver. Morning, friend. Mind they all the mud look, on the path. Um, the, the people with specific professions look different. So here's another weaver who's dressed very similar to the first weaver that I found. Uh, and the blacksmiths often have um, tool belts or uh, straps around their arms, things like that. You again. Give me a chance and I'll earn your trust. If I fail, I'll leave you alone. I'll tell you what. We actually have one problem you can try to resolve. If you're willing, of course. Go ahead. What is it? It gets cold around here, especially close to the mountains. If we want to keep ourselves warm, we need fur for it, rabbit or wolf pelts. But you see our hunter. Well, we got into a little discussion about how things should work in the village regarding payment. And I'm guessing you couldn't agree on that little issue. He doesn't want to work with us anymore, but Herndine mostly depends on him to provide. I want you to convince him to deliver traps. If you can bring us rabbit fur too, that would be very much appreciated. But we can't expect you to do that every day. We want to be self-sufficient with our fur trapping. So the priority is the traps, and the rabbit fur would be a bonus. Take care of that and then I will consider your request. Okay. I'll see what I can do. Go speak with Amelie. 
She's a bit of a troublemaker, but her heart's in the right place, or so I have to tell myself. She has a good relationship with everyone in the village, and knows nearly everything that goes on around here. If anyone can point you in the right direction, it's her. That's what I'll do. So, talk to Emily. And she was basically standing behind me. Not all NPCs can be recruited to your cause. Emily is a quest giver, and the Elder is a quest giver. These people cannot be recruited. Greetings, newcomer. Say, have we met before? Your face is awfully familiar. You have to be Emily. Elder told me you know where I can find the hunter Lubomir. I am what can I do for you? Do you know him? Unfortunately. I need to find him. He's in the forest, just up the hill, not far from the village. Perhaps bring a book so you have something to do while he rants at you. Thanks, I think. Uh, so you mentioned the AI voice. Um, the first time you launch the game, the game informs you that it currently uses AI voices. We are using generative AI during development to prototype voice acting. Expect professional voice acting for the full release. And you can mute AI voices if you want. I don't particularly hate the AI voices. It is, however, really funny because every now and then the AI voices will bug out and um, they'll sound strangely demonic uh, just ra at, at random times and it's hilarious. How can I be of service today? Perhaps you'd like to view my fine wares. So in every village, there is also a merchant that you can buy and sell from. So, for instance, this merchant is selling furs and uh, weapons and tools and the like. But I don't really have any gold, so that's not something I can do. Uh, do villagers respawn, or you can recruit everyone, and the village be, be empty? Uh, they respawn. Uh, villagers can also be killed uh, in certain circumstances as well. There is... Additionally, a bit of a penalty recruiting all of your villagers from one village. It's a penalty called Carpetbagger. And I don't intend to be a Carpetbagger. So I won't be heavily recruiting from one village. And instead, uh, spreading out my recruiting efforts amongst all the villages. Alright. Hawken to Lubomir. He's over this way. Walking um, on the path costs less stamina than walking off path. So if you're traveling long distances, it generally helps to follow the road. And I'm down to two foods, as you can see in the top left. So let's go get a raw mushroom. Yeah, the penalty is called carpetbagger. And then my berries are going to expire first, so I'll pick new berries as well. In fact, I can, as soon as the food is half digested, you can replace it. There's not really a benefit anymore to replacing it. It used to be that if you replaced it, refreshed its cooldown. So if you had very hard to obtain foods in your second and third slots and easy to obtain foods in your first slot, you could keep refreshing the first slot over and over, but that's not the way the game works anymore. They've removed that bug or exploit or whatever you want to call it. So here are the rabbits that I've been sent to hunt. Uh, most wild animals will outrun you and have more stamina than you. And there isn't a concept of persistence hunting. Uh, so unless it's hostile to you, you're generally not going to catch it, and it's best to rely upon uh, bow and arrows. As you can see, I am now exhausted, and this bunny is still hopping away, scot-free. Every now and then, uh, the jagged terrain will trap them, and you can hunt them with melee, but like that's just not a long-term strategy. So here's Lubomir. What are you looking for? It's dangerous to wander around the woods alone. Haven't you heard about wolves or bandits lurking in this area? You don't look like the hunting type, so what are you doing here? Elder sent me? 
He asked for traps. If you have them, the people of Herndine need them. Hurt the people in Herndine. Of course, now they need me. I'm not going to work with them. Torbron has no respect for my craft. He doesn't value everything I've contributed to that damned village. And until he does, they can fend for themselves. Can you help me, at least? I need to build trust with the Elder. Nobody in the village even wants to talk to me. You're asking for help, but you don't know a thing about me or what I went through. I used to be a respected member of the community. I even could have been an Elder if I wanted. But they degraded me because I refused to be a slave to Ashbourne's puppets. So I left. I still tried to contribute from a distance, providing them with fur, food, and creating traps for the sake of the village. But they wanted more. When I asked for better pay, the elder said no and actually warned me not to ask again. At one point, he said he'd speak to the brigands about my behavior. That does sound rough. Yeah, well, the fine people of Herndine don't agree with you. That's why I want to leave that life behind. What do you mean? Let's make an arrangement. You need traps, and I can teach you how to make them so you can catch smaller animals. You look like someone who can get things done. I don't know why, but I feel like you have a lot going on inside your head. I'm willing to join you if you provide me with shelter and food. Together, we can make each other's lives easier in this land. So, can we cooperate? I think that's possible. I'll come back once I've built a shelter for you. Build a housing tent, a place to sleep for your new companion. The icon that you see at the top of my screen is whether or not the deer has noticed me. So you can um, approach deer at a distance to hunt them, but if you get too close, they go and run away. So here is the experience I've earned so far. A little bit of harvesting and a little bit of cooking. Not very much. Okay, the housing tent is done and I can go back to Lubomir Netterby and tell him I have provided him... I wouldn't move in that, <laughs> but... Uh, apparently he will. My roasted mushrooms are about to expire, so I'm going to grab one of those as well. Another thing to note is strategic resources um, like sage or hemp will be placed on your map as well. So as you explore, you will stumble upon uh, copper, tin, sage, flax, hemp, mud, river reeds, things like that. And if you ever need to figure out where they are, uh, you can always consult the map. And if you've found it, uh, that's where they are. I will also mention, uh, again, a little spoiler, but like some of the more advanced materials are going to be in more dangerous areas. So if you're looking for let's say moss or peat, you're going to need to go to the swamps. If you're looking for iron, you're going to need to go in the south where the mountains are. Uh, things of that nature. So not all of the resources are going to be found in one area, and that's by design so that you have to explore and create outposts and travel. Can't quite get my footing. Thought I could shortcut. If you ever get stuck, and I'm not stuck, but if you ever get stuck, uh, there is an unstuck command, which will sort of teleport you to somewhere nearby. Um, 
I've only ever been stuck in this game like once or twice ever. So it's not something you'll uh, often have to use, I think. Unless you're trying to get stuck. Any good news? Is my new home ready? Yes, I'm ready. You can join me. Now you can teach me how to build traps and how they work. Let's get to it. Build the research desk for me and then I will show you how it's done. Oh, and remember that once we build them, you should place it in dense forests to increase the chance of catching something. All right, let's get to work. Your villagers can be assigned to one of three roles at any given time. A worker fulfills your crafting and production orders in the settlement. A companion travels with you and follows your commands and a guard patrols and defends your settlement from danger. I will mention guards are kind of worthless um, and they don't work quite right. And I'll explain, uh, I'll explain now. Uh, the reason is when you have a, a companion or guard, they won't feed themselves. So a companion will follow you around and you can put food in their inventory to keep them fed. If they ever run out of food, they will stop following you and go find food instead. The problem with guards is they also don't feed themselves, but they don't follow you around. So they forget to feed themselves, run out of food, and then revert from being a guard to a worker. And there's often not dangers in your colony unless you uh, are building somewhere dangerous, which would be honestly stupid. Uh, every now and then your your villagers will run into like a wolf or a boar or whatever. That's not a big deal. Um, but I just mentioned that like m almost all the time, everyone's going to be a worker and then they become companions when you need to defend things or attack things. Uh, when they are companions, you can order them around. And there's a bunch of different ways to do that. You can tell them to hold position or charge and just stand in specific spots. And they need to stay well fed. So if I want, um, right now, if I inspect him, I can see his consumed foods, his morale, what he's working at, where he lives, and his job priorities of crafting, delivery, cooking, or research. I'm going to tell him to research more than other things. I can also see his inventory. So here is this his inventory his vest, his pants, his cloak, his uh, primitive club, his attributes. So he can get up to level 5 strength, um, level 5 archery, level 5 hunting, 6 farming, so on and so forth. Uh, he's a prodigy, which means that he gains experience faster. He has good morale and an experience gain from the foods that he is eating. And these are his morale. I can hit E to order him around. And then something that is little known is you can also just right click on the map and you can order them long range. So I just told him to basically go to uh, housing type. Now if I right click right in front of me, you can see the flag has appeared right in front of me where I right clicked. So the flag exists in the world and then I can also go at any time to population here and click on him and tell him to be a worker. So now he's delivering stuff to storage. As being a worker, uh, I can also switch where what outpost he's in. So essentially where he lives, uh, whether he holds his ground or retreats, and whether he's a guard reservist or not. A guard reservist is someone that you can call upon if you get attacked, where they will attempt to grab a weapon and defend the colony. Uh, unfortunately for now, they can't be renamed. I really wish they could, because I would love to name them after you guys, but that's just not how it works. And, uh, yeah. Let's go run back. So, research the small trap with the help of your new settler, and let him craft the trap at a simple workbench, and set it in a dense forest along with bait. Um, so, little pro tip. Traps suck. They're a terrible, terrible, terrible way to get food. So... Do this for the quest. Do not do this for food. Traps, I cannot stress enough, they're horrible. They will get you, like, one food every few days, and if you rely upon them, uh, you're gonna starve to death very quickly. So, in order to research, I can go to the research desk and hit manage, and then uh, find the trap, which is here. Traps unlocked by building a simple workbench. And then it 
in order to research it, I need to place the materials required into the research bench for it. Uh, Lubomir would do this on his own, automatically. In fact, if I mouse over him, you can see he was trying to do it. He was trying to deliver flax and wood to the research desk, uh, but I can just do it for him. Now, I like to have a lot of the mundane things, like crafting complex things like armor and um, high-level tools done by uh, villagers, because it's not cool to have to sit on the crafting bench for five minutes as I make something complex. Uh, but transporting resources long distance is just very easy for the player to do. So right now, he just put away whatever he was is in his inventory. I guess he put some flax seeds away. And now, he is researching on the research desk. And as you can see, it goes pretty fast. So this is the, um, the traps. And as um, the resources are consumed as the research progresses. So you can have, like if, let's say I only had wood and not flax, I could get about half the research done by him consuming the wood for the traps research. So now the traps are done, and I am going to, on the simple work re workbench, tell him to make one trap. And the resources, as you can see here, I only have one wood in storage, so it's saying I don't have enough wood. So I can go get some wood so that he can make a trap. So either I can put the wood in local storage in the workbench, like that. Or I can put it in a box. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's not in my private stash, he'll have access to it. And he will also require food. So, as a general rule of thumb, I like to have maybe a third of my population in a more mature settlement involved in some way in providing food. Whether that's hunting, cooking, cutting down trees or chopping up logs for firewood, um, planting at the farms, making spices on a cauldron, whatever it might be, uh, I do find it is very handy to not have to be manually providing the food yourself because as your population expands, if your workers aren't providing their own food, you will spend 100% of your time doing it manually, and that sucks. Much better to have him do it automatically. Hey, he already made a trap. All right, I'm going to grab one berry in the trap. Um, so an alternative use for traps, I wanted to add, is if you have strategic resources that aren't on a map, let's say a mushroom patch, and you want to mark them down, a trap is a very reasonable way to do it. So I can go to my inventory, right click on the trap to place it, plop it right here between the two mushroom patches, and then go to rename and rename this trap mushroom patch. And then on the map here, well, if I'm not standing next to it. This trap is literally just called Mushroom Patch and allows me to say, hey, oh, I know where mushrooms are. I don't need to be, I don't need to wander around looking for mushrooms. I know exactly where they are. They're right at my Mushroom Patch trap. And if you don't want your um, villagers to use the trap, because honestly, traps suck. Cannot stress that enough, they're horrible. Uh, you can straight up just turn them off. You can tell them never to interact with traps. Uh, and by default, they won't only if you research the Trapper's Hut, uh, which, where is the Trapper's Hut again? I even forget where it is. But if you research the Trapper's, oh, there it is, Trapper's Camp. If you research the Trapper's Camp, you can employ people at the Trapper's Camp to um, use or automatically uh, re bait the traps. Um, but like I said, the, the uh, traps are honestly terrible, so don't, 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 don't. I'm just collecting a bunch of mushrooms so that I can roast them or smoke them. Um, okay, my inventory. 
so that uh, Lubomir and I can eat well. The next thing I want Lubomir to do is to research a bow and a quiver so that I can get the pelt required for the quest uh, without having to uh, to actually use the trap, because the trap might take days before it yields the pelt, and uh, I don't really want to work wait for days. Also, I'm going to have Lubomir do the cooking himself, right? I can collect the mushrooms, that's fine, but uh, he is going to cook. So in terms of priorities, research desk is going to be highest, then campfire, and then the, uh, the, the workbenches and storages. And storages would be delivery, like moving items between. So the next thing I want him to research is an elm shortbow. And for that, I need river reeds and simple cords. So before I can do that, I need to research weaver's loop. Because I need the simple cords, and before I do that, I need the forging camp. So, as you can see, there's a lot of prerequisites. The forging camp requires five berries, five mushrooms. And easily, he could have grabbed these himself. Um, food will spoil on a research bench. So if you leave it in there and he doesn't research quickly, um, I might need to re-add a berry or a mushroom. And then it also requires stone. Now, if I don't collect the stone manually, he would go out on his own if he's working at the research bench. So let's see what he's doing. Right now, he is delivering the research desk. So right now, what he's doing is probably delivering stones that he found out in the woods to the research desk. Um, your villagers do... They're not always bright, but they do attempt to complete tasks without too much um, manual input, let's say. And it looks like he's already researching, so he's probably using up the berries and the mushrooms that I supplied. And now I just supplied the stone. So the foraging camp allows you to um, pick up stuff found out in nature, like flax or sage or stones or mushrooms. And it's a way for workers like Lubomir to automatically do that. Now, your uh, workers will go to sleep um, every night. So he's, at some point, going to stop researching to go hit the hay. And I'm going to continue roasting some mushrooms. Uh, you can stand in fire, won't hurt you. In terms of ambient or environmental damage, there's a little bit of fall damage, but you're allowed to fall a hell of a far distance before it hurts you. Uh, um, and then there's like no fire damage or anything like that. There we go. I got the forging camp. So a forging camp uh, can be placed to allow them to collect strategic resources. It's also worth mentioning that um, you can ruin the strategic resources. So if I find a patch of flax and I drop a foraging camp on it, flax isn't going to grow there anymore. So like, I collected a lot of flax from this little flowery patch. I shouldn't drop a foraging camp on it because it's going to ruin it. And it's easier to ruin things like um, mud patch. So you, sometimes you need mud to mix it with um, straw for cob or as a building material. And if you build something on like a mud patch, you're not going to be able to use it anymore because you will have effectively destroyed it. All right, so the next thing I want to research is the Weaver's Loom. And the Weaver's Loom requires river reeds, wood, and flax. I am going to go retrieve the river reeds myself because um, they're not exactly close to my base camp. Oh, and I just leveled up in cooking. I hit level two cooking. So my cooking speed has gone up as a result. Little and a Bixable. Thank you for the resets. And he is going to be collecting the wood and the flax for the Weaver's Loom. So the current priority right now is to... Well, I can also queue up the traps, but uh, research bow and quiver. That's the priority. 
But I'll also have him um, make traps on the workbench too. So there is a do a one-off and a top-up. I'm going to do a one-off of three traps. We don't have the wood for it though. And um, he'll collect wood from the ground, but I would need a logger camp for him to like chop wood. I'm coming for you, dear. Once I get a bow and arrows. Where am I? So the river reeds grow near water, and I'm heading to this body of water here. I just want to use the roads as much as possible. So speaking about roads, I'm not the only one that uses them. Bandits use them too. Bandits, uh, as far as my anecdotal experiences, they typically travel between encampments, but not all the encampments. So if I, for instance, made my home here, it would be fairly bandit infested because there's just a lot of bandit camps around. But if I cleared out those bandit camps, I, they would stop spawning around there and patrolling around. So you, when deciding to build a permanent base, and I have a specific spot in mind, it's uh, very handy to make sure that all the camps around it are cleared because you don't want regular patrols of bandits walking into your home because what will end up happening is your villagers will inevitably become injured from the constant bandit incursions and die. I mean, you know. Oh, and here are some bandits up ahead. There are two bandits. Uh, oh, actually, there's two groups of bandits. So there's these bandits walking southeast and these bandits walking northwest. Crossing paths. Patrolling. Uh, you do get access to a backpack, yes. Now, I have, like, a tiny little hand axe and uh, no armor or shield or nothing. So I kind of want to avoid these bandits for now. I'm really only here for the river reeds. Now I'm gonna fill my backpack with them so that I don't have to make the return trip. Oh, here we go, the bandit aggro. <clears throat> what I'm trying to do is Break a shield. Huh. Without getting hit. <clears throat> there it goes. Ah! For trouble? Get back here, you coward. I broke your shield, and apparently your will as well. Huh. Sucks for you, dude, that I'm actually better at this than you are. You never hit. Okay. So when you kill bandits, you get knowledge books a lot of the time. So this is a knowledge book of archery, which I'm going to teach myself. And then this book is a knowledge of laboring, which I'm going to teach Lubomir. So in order to do that, I can go to population, go to Lub Lubomir and Netherby, and go to laborer and just click it. Done. So now he is currently reading the laborer's book. Very easy to teach um, anyone else books that way. Uh, not all books can be taught to you, the player. The books I highly advise the player to teach themselves would be uh, Agility and Strength and probably Archery, because Archery is a very powerful combat ability in the game. You can... So when I taught myself the game, I basically beat the game solo with a bow naked because you can kill yeah, as long as i have arrows i can kill a hundred top tier bandits with a bow no problem it's not how i intend to play this series though because it's more interesting to lead an army in my opinion so the combat is very similar to mountain blade bannerlord which i play often um you have directional attacks up left right down um you have a heavy attack if you hold left mouse button 
And then with footwork and observing your opponents, you can hit them and have them not hit you. And also it's worth mentioning, um, shields can break and they, depending on the options here, um, there is something called enable fluid blocking. I like to turn enable fluid blocking off. You can experiment with that yourself, but uh, fluid blocking is like blocking different directions. Whereas if I'm fighting, I would just rather block in the direction that I intend up, left, right, down. Fluid blocking is like blocking all together and it's very confusing and I don't like it. So I turn that off. It's pretty much the only option I disable. Uh, also, these straps are, you can make them with a blacksmith, but they're going to be really important for gear later on. So like collect straps for sure. I have six more slots, seven more slots. As I mentioned, river reeds can be, oh, that's bandits. I could probably defeat them, but that's not why I'm here. Another thing to mention is that the raid threat went up when I defeated the bandits. As you kill bandits, uh, they will want to destroy your settlements. So engaging bandits willy-nilly constantly can actually endanger your villagers unless they're ready to fight. So it's not always a good idea. Um, there is a quest giver over here, though, so while I'm here, I might as well pick that up. Indicated by the, um, the minimap chat quest box. It's not often that I see visitors out here in the wilderness. What brings you to my humble abode? Uh, how can I help you? You've got the look of someone who knows when there is a good opportunity to earn some honest coin. I need the help of a traveler like yourself. I've been chasing a legend for years now, the elusive Golden Trout. Golden Trout? I suppose I'll find it in the same place as the Three-Headed Rabbit and the Endangered Unicorn? This isn't just any folktale. The golden trout is real, rare, and valuable. Some say it swims in the clearest mountain streams. Others reckon it's a nighttime lurker. But here's the kicker. The Padstow village elder is the only person known to have caught one. Why haven't you tried catching it yourself? Got no luck on the rod? With the rod? I've tried tackling this alone, believe me. I used all the fishing tricks I knew, the timing, the bait, and nothing. But this is my life goal, and I am not going to give up. That's where you come in. I need you to find out what bait the Elder used. In return, I'll reward you handsomely. A fat bag of coins for your trouble. What do you think? All right, I'll bite. No pun intended. I'll pay I the Elder a visit. I appreciate your help. This golden trout, it's been my obsession for the longest time. Catching it, it would be the crowning achievement of my life as a fisherman. And maybe it'll show the anglers of the lowlands that we don't need that damn fishing guild. All right, I'll get the bait then. Thank you for tuning in to Bell Right, which originally streamed live on Twitch May 25th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, viewers that turned out to the Marathon's live stream, and also viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Bellrites.